can block it or you can keep it open based on what your requirements are as a company. Because when, let's say, the OSI inspector comes, you know, we don't want him to download an app, right? You want him to just scan the QR code and pull up certification, like, you know. So that's the level we are in. I think that in the future, there is a possibility that quant becomes the standard for SSTs. And, you know, like, let's see where, you know, where it goes. Interesting. So you're talking a lot about badges, and I think that quant, Quant's badges are a big uh, central piece for the software. I look at the badges, the center, when I'm on site, the badge really ties a lot of things together when, when I go to talking about it. Can you describe the inception of the badge? Let's start there. Yeah, um, look, the, one of the biggest challenges that our industry told us when we went to the market was that the workforce was an unknown unknown. There was, that was one of the biggest line items in their budget. Uh, you know, everything was, that was where the majority of the funds of the construction sub or GC was being paid. But it was also a big unknown in terms of how many workers do I need to build this building actually, or how many hours it's gonna take. I mean, there are industry standards, but those are not based upon the dynamics of how the job is changing on a daily basis because as you know every job is a unique job right it has different moving parts including weather including supplies including you know labor laws and including you know skill set and everything it's a massively dynamic thing so we wanted to capture that data in real time and i always compare this with the fitbit or a Apple Watch or a ring that I wear, like, you know, where if I were to input my data about my heartbeat or my sleep or my, you know, steps I've taken manually, it wouldn't have been possible to get the insights that I'm getting right now in terms of my readiness for per day, like, you know. Um, so we wanted to capture that data in real time. And that's where the start of the smart badges came in. Um, you know, we have three kinds of smart badges. One is a simple badge that is able to know where the workers are or, you know, what time the workers enter the job site. It's an active badge that is actively broadcasting information at a millisecond level. <clears throat> the other badge is a improvised version of that or advanced version of the badge that has advanced features like fall detection, near miss detection. Uh, it also has an SOS button with a buzzer in it. Um, and the third one is then a simple RFID badge that, you know, which you've seen in multiple uh, job sites. I'm sure you've seen that. Those are the three kinds, right? And, you know, I think based upon what the customer wants and based on what the use case is, they can choose one of these badges and customize it to their need, actually, yeah. So that's great. Uh, I'd like to, to have a follow-up here. Okay, so you mentioned that the the problem that that's Quant's badges was attempting to solve was the, the workforce tracking, okay? yeah. just in general, having these very large projects. You mean to tell me that they don't know where the labor is? So what I'd like to, to do is, is let's try to describe a job without Quant. Yeah. and talk about some of their processes and talk about some of the, the challenges preventing them yeah. from getting this data in real time. So how would a typical job site track labor? And we can have a conversation about this, but let's, let's try to envision like why are they missing the pieces? Yeah, and Mike, you've been to the sites, right? You know, and, I, and I see this happening on a regular basis, like, you know, um, the Payroll piece requires this data to be very accurate for a sub. Or a prevailing wage job will require this to be very accurate as well. There's, there's definitely a requirement. A daily report is a mandatory compliance requirement for every job site in the US. It could be globally as well, right? And one of the things that goes in there is the number of workers per trade and the hours they work. And that report right now is created by a sub 
who tells the GC how many workers they had every day, actually, or how many hours they worked. Now, in many cases, I've seen that data is not very accurate. <laughs> uh, what about, let's say you have a, a high-rise construction, right? A site superintendent shows up to the site. He has to do his daily man count report. Yeah. How long would it take him to travel to 10 floors exactly. and count every worker? Yeah, and or airports or these large factories or data centers we work on, which are acres and acres of land, you need to have five, ten supers just going around counting people, right? And that's a that's a lot of time that is spent on doing things that is could be automated, and the super can do high value work like using that as a time to analyze which work uh, sub has less workforce. So you can call them to bring more workforce. Because ultimately, when somebody gets delayed, something, some activities get delayed in schedule, it's either the material getting delayed, in the majority of the case, it's the manpower that's getting delayed, right? And what ends up happening is that, you know, they will bring less labor force in the beginning, and ultimately you start cranking up the project towards the end, and the density of the workforce is so high during the time that the risk of injuries and accidents gets higher because everybody's swinging hammer at the end, like, you know. So to prevent that, you want to have an accurate headcount on a project. And if they have a lower headcount than, than what they had planned for or what they had budgeted for, then you can give them a call immediately. And then and next day they can bring an uh, additional workforce. So based on this feedback, we have two emails that goes out on every day to the project managers one in the morning or in the evening you can set your time what time the email you want to get the email and you can see that the headcount has gone down from yesterday or today and take proactive actions rather than having to wait for you know a week sometimes in some cases a month because i've been told by a lot of our partners or or in the industry leaders that in large-scale job site the daily report compilation sometimes takes at least one to two weeks, actually. Sure, this has to do with a lot of the, the scheduling work. A lot of it is comparing the, the man count. Yeah. Now, let's also talk about the daily man count report versus your weekly payroll. Yeah. Right? I would say that.